Hey everyone, I thought I would share with you all my backstory on how I bought my first designer bag at age, I think I was either 14 or 15, I was definitely no older than 15, and I will caveat this designer bag because it kind of, in one way it is a designer brand, but it's not like a Chanel or anything like that, but it was a bag that I was desperate for, and I'm gonna share with you what that bag was and how I went about getting it. Uh, and I'm also gonna share with you kind of my journey after that. The next bag that I got, which is in a Louis Vuitton case and it's actually not Louis Vuitton. So I'll tell you about that and take it from there because I thought this could be just an interesting chatty thing. So my first bag that I bought when I was 14 or 15 was this. I can hear you laughing. I kind of find it funny myself, but at the same time, this is a Tommy Hilfiger bag that actually was a free gift with purchase of a bottle of perfume. This came out in the late 90s, early 2000s, late 90s I think it must have been, and I, I remember going shopping with a friend and seeing it in, like, in a beauty counter and thinking, I've always wanted a designer bag and that is the one that I want. But I remember very clearly it was £25 and £25 was huge for me. £25 might as well have been £250. It was a lot of money and it was money that I did not have. Now the extra pressure that I had with this bag is that it was limited edition. So I didn't have forever to save up for it. So what I did was I kind of was like Operation Tommy Hilfiger bucket bag. I, um, and I've spoken to you about uh, before about my kind of like work history and what I've done. But the first thing I did was I washed cars. I did it for everyone that I knew, anyone who was gonna pay me, even if they were gonna pay me a pound, anyone who wanted their car washed, I would wash their car. The other thing that I did is, so my dad's a builder and my dad, when I was growing up, if you wanted pocket money, you didn't just get it. You had to do something for it. My dad didn't even care that I was a girl. It was kind of like, if you want to earn money, you need to get onto the building site. So I did. And I tell you what, working on a building site has made me a genius when it comes to DIY. I can just about do pretty much most things around the house and it's all because of that experience. But that was another thing that I did to earn money is I went and helped my dad on projects. I was washing cars. I was doing gardening for people. And I remember um, saving up this money. And you know when you get to a certain point with your savings where you're still quite far away from your total and then, but you've got a nice amount, you know, and, and things that you could, something you could spend on something else. I do remember getting to a point where I was like, oh my God, I'm still quite far off my total. And um, do I just want to spend the money on something else? But I stayed focused. And I remember the day that I had exactly 25 pounds, not a penny more, I went to the shop and they had some left and I bought it. And I was so, with that bag, I used that bag constantly for a long time and also what I loved about it is that I didn't just get the bag I got some perfume with it as well it was like two great things at the same time but that was my first step into bags really and I was always interested in bags but more so I was always interested in designer brands I loved the advertising campaigns that brands would put out, particularly um, the 90s sort of Chanel campaigns. I just loved the creativity of them. I loved the fashion, I loved the elegance, and I did always think, oh, one day I'd really like one of those bags. Not when I was 15, because to me, the classic flap was like an older bag. Um, there were younger bags that I wanted, like very Y2K bags that I wanted, but that was the first bag that I bought. Now, my next bag, and it's in here, and I've shown you this before, but there's quite a nice story behind it. So I met my husband, David, and I was quite young at the time. I was about 22, and I, so by this point, I didn't have the Tommy Hilfiger bag. I don't know what happened to that, but it's long gone. Don't know. It wasn't leather or anything. It was made out of like a synthetic, so maybe it broke. I'm not sure. But by this point, I'm super into bags, and I used to always buy bags from River Island. That was like my preference. I thought, you know, I can't, I can't afford a designer bag, but I can afford something from River Island. 
and I liked their designs, I liked their styles, so that's what I had. Well, anyway, I met David, and six months after we met, I was living with him, and I was at work, and I was at this new job, and the new job was, like, really stressful and really intense, and I was kind of very much, like, learning as I went. You know how it goes, like, when you're in a new job. And I came home from work, and I came home really late, because... At, when you work in agency typically you tend to work late and I remember getting home at like eight or nine o'clock at night in the week and David was so sweet he was already home and he was like oh I got I got something for you um like you know go and have a shower put in your pajamas chill and and I as I did this so I walked into the bedroom to put my coat away and on the bed was this huge Dior carrier bag huge just on the bed like with a ribbon on it and I just stood there for a moment and I did not know what to say and he came in behind me and he was so excited to see my reaction and I opened this bag the carry bag and in it was this and I feel like this bag right now potentially looks dated but it's one that I love and I will never get rid of and it's this how many of you remember the gaucho bag? So this was a variation of the saddle bag, but this was a, um, a version of it that came in metallic gold. And David said to me that um, he'd gone into Selfridges uh, on his work break and he was like looking for something to get me and he saw this bag and he was like, I saw it and it was so you and I loved the gold on it and I just figured that you would really like that and I decided to get it for you. And I was so touched, like, can you imagine someone doing that for you? Can you imagine someone actually buying you a bag and the kindness of that and the thoughtfulness of that? And I was, I will, to this day, I will always be, in awe of this bag and the other great thing about this bag is the actual bag David got me I was out I was in a club one night and I had this over my shoulder you wouldn't believe it but the handle came off there are kind of rivets holding the handle on and I was I had it on my shoulder and that this just came off and I remember the, the evening there I had it under my arm and I was trying I was like trying to hold this on took it back to Dior and Dior were amazing they looked at it and they were like no nah, we won't even fix it. Here's a brand new one. So this has actually never been used because the original that I used to death, I am actually glad I got a new one because I had a biro in it that leaked as well. So this one is without the biro issue, but the, the strap is totally fine and that's not gonna break. So that's kind of the second bag that I got. The third bag that I got, and this was uh, many years later, um, and I've shown you it before. It's this Gucci Boston bag and it's got it's very Like it's very 2000s vibes. I feel this bag um, It's a Boston bag and it's got metallic hearts on it And this bag was a limited edition for Valentine's Day And what I loved about Gucci all the way back is that you didn't have to go in store to buy you could buy online and at the time in the 2000s, not many brands you could buy online from that were like high up brands, but Gucci you could. And I felt that it took the pressure off, you know, because you weren't having to go into the shop and feel that pressure to buy something. And also you don't have to ask how much things are because the price is already there so you can kind of budget better. And there was a picture of this bag and as soon as I saw it, I thought, wow, it caught my eye. I loved it. And the benefit to it was, it was a £400 bag. Again, it feels like nothing right now, but to me, £400 was a huge amount of money. So I was able to pay £100 a month up until February. So by the time February came, I'd long since paid for it. And I'd been able to do it in like manageable amounts. Um, and actually the way I did that, it wasn't like, like Gucci, for example, they didn't have a payment option. Sorry, I should say this. What I did is you could reserve it and pay later. So what I did is I reserved it and every month I'd add to my savings account another £100, another £100 until I got to 400 and then when it came to the point where your reserved item you had to pay for, I already had the money. So that was the next thing. Um, the next bag that I bought and it's one that I sold and I do regret selling it actually, it's Louis Vuitton and the bag style was called Bria and it was in a really pretty metallic taupe, sort of taupey gold. I, why did I sell it? Do you know, this is the thing. Do you ever sell things and then, I do this thing, so I'll sell something 
And then one day I'll think to myself, where's that coat gone? Oh God, and I'm looking for this coat. And then I'm like, oh my word, like I actually sold that and I would quite like to wear it today. And I do that, I have a habit of doing that. And that's what I did with this bag. I sold it one day and then I went to wear it and it wasn't there and I was like, oh, I sold it. And I don't even think they make it anymore. And it was a gorgeous bag. Um, Mind you though, whoever else has got it now, I know they're loving it at the moment, but yeah, it's one that is a really good bag and it's one that I like. And the way I afforded that was with a bonus. So I, that, again, that bag I bought many years later when I was like, I would think I was about 30, 29, 29 when I bought that bag. And I only bought it because I got this bonus and it was a Christmas bonus, one that I wasn't expecting. Um, and I remember I was so lucky because the bonus was enough that I actually bought two bags. One was from Chanel and it was a tote bag. And if I've still got a picture of it, I'll insert it here. Um, and I always kind of borderline regretted that bag because I should have just gone for the classic flap all the way back then. But I felt really nervous and I didn't really want to bother anyone. And I did like the bag. When I saw it, I was like, yeah, I do really like that. But I look back and I think you should have just got the classic flap. But anyway, that bag I've sold as well. So I bought that and Bria, not on the same day or anything, but around the same kind of time. And it was because I had this bonus that I was able to do it. And really from there, my journey has just been that I've been so fortunate enough to um, to be able to earn money that allows me to own these things. And that's, that's something that I'm really grateful for because you know what, in life, anything can happen. Your luck can change on the turn of a dice, is that the same? Um, flip of a coin. And I'm always so grateful for what I have. I'm just so, so grateful for it. And that doesn't just go for bags, it goes for everything, even, like I always say this to David, when we eat dinner at night, I'm like, there are people out there right now that don't actually have food. And we are so lucky to be eating. And I'm so grateful for every single thing I've ever had in my life and every single thing that I continue to have in my life. But yeah, when it comes to selling bags, actually, I've slowed down a lot because whenever I look at my collection, I feel like there are there are bags I'm not using, like the Bottega Jody bag I don't use for reasons I've spoken about before. And I should sell that, but and I probably will actually at one point sell that. But actually, most of the bags I have, I use them regularly. And I have a lot of you saying, oh, you must have loads of bags. How do you use them? Honestly, I am constantly changing them up with different outfits. And, I, you know, we, David and I, again, we're fortunate. We go out for dinner a lot and chill out with each other a lot. And I'm always swapping over bags whenever we go out in the evening. Um, so I do really get the opportunity to enjoy what I've got. And I'm, again, I'm lucky for that. But yeah, that's how I've done it really. And I would say if you're looking to start your collection and you're wondering how you can go about doing it, the only thing that worked for me was working my way up. That was the only thing that actually enabled me to be able to buy anything even half decent was working my way up and getting bonuses here and there. And I've done videos before on ways that you can get promotions and get bonuses. And I can certainly do more videos on that if they help. Just my experience, really, on what worked for me. Um, but that's the way that I've that I've always done it is just through work. Even back when I was a kid and I would work with my dad or doing gardening or whatever, it I afforded it by working hard and saving hard. Um, but definitely, if you're someone who's, as I say, trying to build a collection and you're wondering how to get there, for me personally, it all came down to earnings. That's really all it all it was i hope you've enjoyed this video just like hanging out chilling out um thank you all so much for watching and i'll see you in the next video